Let's talk making your next centerpiece. And I'm gonna pass along three tips to make it even better than ever. Hello friend, my name is Kathleen and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk all about the business of flowers. You are in exactly the right place if you're a floral designer, a farmer florist, or a flower lover who is on a mission to build a profitable flower business. Today, I wanted to take you behind the scenes and show you one of my favorite design practices so that you can go out there and start creating the work that you've always wanted to make. One of the guiding principles of creating a business that we love is that we, as the floral designer, get to create designs and work that we feel passionate about. But, I didn't know that that was a thing. I spent the first few years of my design career working for myself in a business where I was completely uninspired by some of the designs that we were making. And I could not figure out how the heck do I go from somebody who has done their formal floral certification to actually creating the kind of work I wanted to create. So that is the exact point of this video because I want to give you total permission to know that right now, because you are the owner of a floral design business, that also makes you the creative director. And that means that you have the ultimate say in terms of the kind of work you want to be creating. And I know that that can feel scary and I know that that can feel totally overwhelming. And it's really unfamiliar for us as business owners, as human beings to be the one that's in the driver's seat. And I wanted to take you behind the scenes and talk you through my go-to approach in terms of how to make that happen. What it's called and what I refer to it as is intentional practice. I think so many designers think I should just be able to chuck a bunch of flowers together and make it look as pretty as that thing that I saw on Instagram. That was totally my thought process. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it does not work that way. So my friend, I want you to know that this intentional practice process is exactly the process that I used in my business to start to move away from allowing my customers to dictate the work that we were creating and start to learn how I could create the work I wanted to be creating. So let's jump into it. What is intentional practice? I think, and I love to teach this concept to every designer on the planet, and it can be super, super simple. I know, and I used to be the person that thought I had to have tons of flowers to be able to practice and learn something and continue to hone my skills, but I actually love the constraint of limiting myself to what I have available to me and always making it my intention to learn something. So that is the whole point of the way that I set up my intentional practice sessions. You can go in and grab my free worksheet. It's inside my big ass folder, Free Shiz for Florists, and it's a very quick one page PDF. You can do this exercise on anything. I love doing it for photography and for design and for deconstructing other designers' work that I love. The whole point is that you set one intention of your practice, then you do your session. And then you take a few minutes to reflect upon your session. And this is where the real learning happens. So you're gonna ask yourself, what are three things that I love about what I created? And what are three things that I'm gonna do differently next time? And the best bit is you don't have to love every design that you create in an intentional practice session. But what it does is it gives you a new baseline to work from. So you can create something that you only 50% love, make notes about what you would do differently next time, and you're that much further ahead in your design skills. It's such an incredible practice, and I promise you it's gonna take your work to the whole next level. You just have to make sure you make it a priority every week as a designer in your flower business. So I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and I'm gonna share three lessons of one of my latest intentional practice sessions. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I didn't absolutely love what I made, but I do know I learned so much through this session and I want you to go out there Put the intentional practice to work in your business because it is how you can better your design skills.
In making this table arrangement, the first lesson I learned is that foliage is optional. This is something that flies in the face of what is taught at most formal certifications and at most qualification classes, but it's something that I love to teach floral designers because I walked around for years not even realizing that that was a thing. So foliage is optional and you are allowed to decide the kinds of foliages you want to use and the role that foliage plays in your designs. Go out there and look at the designers whose work you just absolutely love and ask yourself two questions. Do they use foliage in their designs? Yes or no. And if they do use foliage in their designs, what kinds of foliage are they using? It's so easy for us to get wrapped up in the tradition and the normal kind of principles that are taught from a very fundamental design perspective. But I just want to see this thought with you to say foliage is optional. And in the case of this table arrangement, I went out of my way to find foliage that was very interesting and actually played a very architectural and color role in this design. I didn't just default to the usual foliage that some of us have access to and kind of assume that it needs to be part of the design. So lesson number one, foliage is optional. And lesson number two, play with your layers. Now, one of the things in terms of my mission of this intentional practice session was to play with a color palette that I have never used before. Now, this color palette's like out of my comfort zone. These orange ranunculus, I'm like, eek. <laughs> I don't know what to do. There's like so kind of in your face and the size of them is like beautiful, which is amazing. However, pushing Kathleen's design skills to the next level requires me to push myself out of my comfort zone. And one of the things I have learned is that we can embrace some really bold colors. And if we play around with the layers in our designs, then it's going to have a different impact in terms of the ratio or proportion of some of those colors in terms of the final look of the arrangement. When you look at the final design, you'll see that orange is there, but it's not necessarily as dominant as it could have been because some of the orange is tucked in behind other flowers and behind other foliages. So don't forget as a designer to play with that third dimension because it just adds a whole new level of depth and interest to the work that you're creating. And lesson number three, take notes. Now there's obviously the questions that I ask on the intentional practice worksheet, but the other thing that is so incredibly helpful is write down what you made, how many ingredients you used, what kinds of ingredients, how many stems, the size of the container, and what you would do next time. Because then you can start to build yourself a repertoire of recipes so that if you know you want to create that kind of design for a client, you already have a place to start and you already know, okay, this is my base. This is what I would do next time. Now I'm going to quote accordingly. And you'll be so much happier with the end result. So I know it can feel tedious. And sometimes when we make work that we just don't love, we don't want to look at it anymore. But I promise you just going through this exercise is going to be so helpful so that you're not starting from square one every single time out. You're going to create a recipe or create a design. And so those are my three tips, my three lessons learned from one of my most recent intentional practice sessions. And I will leave leave my recipe, my stem count, and the pricing structure I would follow for this kind of design in the description below. So feel free to take the recipe, adapt it how you like, go out there and make it your own. But please remember to go in and download my intentional practice worksheet. This process is one of the single most impactful things I did in my business to go from creating designs that were okay to really learning how to create the design aesthetic that I wanted to put out into the world. Like so often I will make something and I'll be like, Meh. <laughs> I don't love it but this is what I would do next time. So that that puts me back in the driver's seat when I'm going out to create something for a paying client, I'm like, oh yeah, right. I've got that intentional practice work session that I did. Here's the recipe that I'm gonna start from. And I'm so much further ahead instead of just looking at the blank page or even what I used to do, just arbitrarily pick a random number that you're gonna quote for your client. Yes, 
That's what I used to do. So my friend, go into my big ass folder, free shiz, download the intentional practice worksheet, make a date with yourself every single week to practice something. I promise you it's gonna pay off for you so many times over in your business and you're really gonna start to love the kind of work that you are creating. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you're the first to know when my next video goes live. And as always, my friends, take care of yourself, Drink all your water, get more sleep, and have the most amazing week. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.